Hey everybody and welcome to the Quadcopter Review. I'm your host Pepe Pranz and don't forget as always to like, comment, and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Subscribing helps boost the channel and commenting liking helps us on the YouTube search. Also at the very top about now you're going to be seeing a link to our latest giveaways and so on going on the channel. Always look up there. Always good stuff going on. So today what we're going to do is a little follow up on our Eosheen trash can and what we're going to do is is we're going to connect this XT30 connector to it and remove the JST2 connectors that came with it so you can run two batteries. Now, before you do this, make sure you think, do you want to do it? Um, if you take this JST2 connectors off, you can't use the uh, Terminator to fly this 1S anymore. You'll have to use that XT30. So the first thing we're going to do is take off all the screws. And let me tell you something. These screws suck. I can't tell you how badly these screws suck. These are like the tiniest screws I've ever seen. And the screwdriver they give you will not work uh, on these little screws. Luckily, uh, my tool just barely worked, but you can want a tiny little screwdriver. So next up, what we're gonna do is desolder the JST2 connectors off of the board, and we'll get all of our things ready in order to do that. I need my little tip cleaner here for my soldering iron. We're gonna use a little, uh, a little paste there. We're gonna use some um, some flux paste. Sorry. Uh, we're also if you have one, you can use your flux pin, which is also awesome. I'll put a link below to these. These are very cool. Uh, but I'm just gonna um, take and use like an exacto knife here and pull out a little paste and add it to uh, the pads that the JSTs were on, so we can get some good flow when we go ahead and do it. We're gonna need some solder. We're gonna need our connector, which has been pre. That, that connector has been pre-tinned, so it does already have solder on it, which is awesome. So what we need to do is we need to pull out those connectors out of the frame, and we're going to have to put this one up through the frame because obviously we can't get the connector back to the top. So if you're going to do this, remember, pre-put that through the top. So let's uh, go ahead and desolder these. So apply your iron, just pop them off, throw that guy out of your way. Then we'll, uh, so you can see here, that's where we, our two pads are. And we will now go ahead and what I'm going to do is take this paste because that's what I like to use. Get a little, get a little bit on my tip, which, you know, what you're going to see here is not a little bit. It's actually kind of a lot, but you only want to apply a little bit there. Um, wipe off the excess or, or just get it off with your exacto. But what we're going to do is, as you can see, I don't have as much on there. So we're going to heat that up and we're going to flow some extra solder on there because they didn't need much solder for those JST2s. And if you have too much, just go ahead and wipe it off if you have too much flux. But I'm going to build up a little bit more um, solder on these joints, but make sure we don't bridge those at all. But uh, add some more on there because this wire is much, much thicker on the XT30. So we'll take that now and um, off screen, unfortunately. I'm not usually used to uh, filming this closely, guys. But what we're going to do is we're going to put it through the bottom, as I mentioned, and we're going to apply heat and we're going to solder our joints on, making sure closely that we didn't bridge them as we have here. And if we can get into focus. So there we are. As you can see, we're good. Make sure you kick them back toward the back a little bit so that you can do this. You're going to want to push them in to that uh, duct right there or they're kind of out by your props and uh, you don't want to cut those. So make sure you tuck them in to keep them out of your way. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put our lid back on and something to think about when you're putting this lid back on is that triangle shaped board there that is your VTX needs to line up with the hole in the canopy because it's also using that to, to help support it and hold it down into the vibration dampeners that we have on the pegs. So again, these little screws suck, but if you get the angle just right, you can see we can get the screw between that hole and that mounting space and through the hole at the same time. So we'll just go ahead and screw all these guys back on. There's only three. The front um, 
the front mount doesn't actually have a screw in it so you just have the two side screws and the back screw that are holding it on that back one was kind of a pain too to actually get the screw in the hole so we could drive it down make sure you drive them down properly um, I'm not sure if this is going to reduce any of the vibration but it feels tighter now that that's going on now something else uh, I want to say is that uh, one of the subscribers wrote me and said hey uh, on those 1s batteries you could just take the two put them together and use some shrink sleeve and heat that up around the two and that that shrink sleeve will actually you know add some some millimeters of of thickness to those batteries and actually probably take out that slack we were seeing in the 1s batteries so that's something to uh to think about and keep in mind and thank you for giving me that idea because uh, i hadn't thought of that at all but just like these uh, 300 batteries here they have a clear shrink sleeve shrunk around them so same kind of concept you just do to make your two 1s's into one big 2s so as you can see that 300 ma beta fpv battery fits absolutely perfect shockingly enough i did it properly and i didn't set anything on fire which is always awesome in my world now uh i was going to change out the props because that was another suggestion you guys gave me hey try these uh try some other props and the only thing i had really was the beta fpv props and a couple of them actually stuck but most of them uh the hole is actually too big on the beta fpv props so they just go on and come right off so that's not going to work so unfortunately at this time i'll try to get some through amazon quicker from another brand once i verify the whole size of the motor and try to get some other props to try for us because i, I couldn't do that for the person that requested me seeing if new props would get rid of the vibration so when you put the props back on in case you took them off the the fatter side or the side that's going to cause the lift needs to be on that outside as i was showing you there and then of course they're on the caddy corner side because you need to remember these are running props out so if you just took like one of your other props in type um whoops and looked at it and just tried to follow that when putting your props on uh, it wouldn't fly it's just going to sit on the ground and spin so that's why that would be i also found as you can see here on the desk in the package hidden in all the little goodies with the screwdriver is the terminator so you can run it 1s i didn't think and i think i said that they didn't give us one but they actually gave us one of these it's in the package uh, not like this is super complicated to make but uh, they did give us one and you'll have that and another viewer also said hey uh there should be a a piece of foam or something in the package to take out that slack in the 1s batteries i personally didn't get one but remember these were one of the first ones out it wasn't a tester kit uh not very many people give me much but it i you know it was one of the early kits that came out like i was first in line so you know once again i'll try to uh, to get you some decent props to check out because these just simply aren't going to work so i'll put everything back on the way it was and we'll go from there now, seeing as how I already have those off, I need to put these uh, props back on that came with it. Let me show you what I meant about props out. So instead of spinning counterclockwise, it's going to spin clockwise on, on this front right. So you want to make sure the lift side of the prop there, or what I always call the fat side in plain English, needs to go on the outside when you have it straight up and down. And same goes here, outside or left on the left side. And then, of course, if you're new, we run these on caddy corner, so you would take your left front style prop and put it on the right back. So. Now I found another part of our vibration issue and this is just 101 and I feel like an idiot for not doing it because I do preach it but what you guys need to do when you get these quads, um, any of these binding flies, is you want to make sure you go in with your tools and make sure every screw, bolt, everything you can find, you check to make sure it's been locked down properly before you even dream of taking it up in the air because that's basically what I did. I was excited, wanted to show everybody this new one and I didn't go through my checkpoints and make sure everything was locked down. And when I looked at it today, sure enough, um, when I took the first flight out, it was, I mean, vibrating hard. And when I brought it in here, I found that 
two of the three bolts had fallen out of one of the motors and it was basically just shaking around violently. So I got that fixed and that did help a little bit as well as locking down the canopy a little bit tighter. So make sure you do that before you any of these things uh, that you're just going to buy that's already built because uh, a lot of times they come out of the factory with problems like that. Now we're going to look at some of the worst flight footage you'll probably ever see. Um, if you look, the wind was blowing here today at a steady 15 and gusts up to 25. So as you can see, I'm just getting blown left, blown right. But I did want to show you the power of the battery. It is, you know, a little bit more powerful. Uh, it's not anything to, you know, write home about. You can't literally say like, oh, I gained 50% power off of this battery. It's not the case. So make sure you think about, like I said, all of the factors you want to consider when using this. I mean, if you want to fly at 1S in the house, don't change it to the XT30. Leave the JST uh, 2.0s on. You'll be totally fine. You're not missing out on that much. Um, if you have a ton of batteries and you're thinking, oh, you know, I, I messed up. I should got, don't worry about it. You're not missing that much. Uh, you know, 5%, 6 8 just uh, nothing like I said to write home about. You're, you're not going to, you, you're not that bad off. So, Tried my best here to give you guys some footage, uh, a little bit of pops. Um, I'm leaving a lot more crash in here too, uh, like that full crash on the roof into the tree, just a smorgasbord of crashing and then out of the tree down to the ground. And the reason why I wanted to do this was I told you I'd come back and talk durability with you. Nothing has broken, nothing. I got scratches and shit all over it. <laughs> that's for sure but no frame breakage which is what we just went through with uh, the Babula 7 no frame breakage on this to me is huge uh, that particular model although again as I said I had no issues with my frame at all that particular model you know has really let a whole bunch of people down I mean if you go on to Facebook or whatever you can see tons of people writing going well that was cool I got 30 seconds and crashed and it broke because the reality of this hobby is you're gonna crash and you're gonna crash a lot a lot I can't even tell you how much I've crashed this thing uh, 30 40 50 times on 20 batteries I mean you're gonna crash a lot so if you're crashing while you're learning, don't worry about it. Don't worry, and just enjoy, you know, the hobby, and don't, don't get let yourself get roped into watching these videos with these pro pilots. Once again, pro pilots who can do crazy things like Maddie and Drib and those guys. I mean, they're they're very good. It's their full time thing. They spend a lot of time doing it, a lot more time practicing than most of us normal people can do. So don't worry about it, and just enjoy. So. At this point, uh, I wanted to come over and monkey with my neighbor because, or with my mailman because, you know, he's always asking, you know, what are you getting in the mail, like, every day from China because uh, I make him walk from the curb all the way up to my house is set back further than most. So I make him walk over to my house every time, and it's, uh, it's a lot for him. But it was a substitute today. All right, guys, so I hope this was a little bit helpful. Keep asking questions. I'll keep making videos and answer them for you on this one. But for me, it's a winner. It's doing great, and I really, really like it. Uh, hopefully, this wind will stop, and I'll be able to have a, a little more fun with it than I was fighting here. But as always, guys, uh, don't forget to subscribe, like the channel, use the links. Happy flying. Hey guys, thanks for stopping by and checking out the quadcopter review. If you want to see more interesting reviews on FPV related stuff, take a look up here in the old right corner right there. You'll find links to all the rest of my reviews. If you want to get in on some of the best giveaways on YouTube, look over here. Don't forget to subscribe right here on my chin. And if you want to check out my flying only videos separated from the review channel, check that out right here. And thanks for coming. Don't forget to subscribe and happy flying.